بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقرآن الحكيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وآية لهم أنا حملنا ذريتهم أنا حملنا ذريتهم في الفلك المشحون وخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يركبون وإن نشأ نغرقهم فلا صريخ لهم فلا صريخ لهم ولا هم ينقذون إلا رحمة منا ومتاعا إلى حين الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يمدين إن شاء الله we're going to be studying ayahs number 41 through 44 ayahs 41 through 44 today إن شاء الله this is the third thing that Allah سبحانه وتعالى here is pointing out as a major sign of reflection for these people First thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah number 33, He said, وَآيَةُ The dead earth. And we talked about the reviving of the earth. Then in ayah number 37, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَآيَةُ لَهُمُ الْلَيْلِ And another miraculous, apparent, obvious sign for them is the night. And then He talked about some of the interchanging of the night and day and the sun and the moon and the reflections that were therein. This is the third time this type of a beginning of the this is the third time, and ayah is starting in the same fashion, in the same way, which is وَآيَةٌ لَهُمْ This is ayah number 41. So Allah says another great, miraculous, obvious sign for them is that أَنَّا حَمَلْنَا ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ That most definitely we have carried their progeny. Their progeny. The word ذُرِّيَّة in the Arabic language means progeny, offspring, the generations that come forth. So we have carried their progeny fil fulk al mashhoon fulk of course i talked about that yesterday as well it means ship like a huge boat a ship and al mashhoon shahn the root of this word it means to fill up something and it's specifically used for when you fill up a boat or you fill up some mode of transportation but more specifically a boat so al fulk al mashhoon means a boat that's been filled all the way a boat that's been completely packed filled to capacity so Allah says a miraculous and amazing sign for them is the fact that we have carried their progeny in the boat that was completely filled to the max. So what is this talking about? So first of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now, He talked about the earth. And He talked about some of the reflections that we can look up in. So first He talked about the ground. Look at the ground and reflect on the, uh, on the greatness of Allah by looking at the ground. And that which grows out of the ground and comes out of the ground. Then he said, look up at the sky. And reflect at the, on the greatness of Allah by looking at the sky. Now Allah is calling our attention to the water. And other different facilities that Allah has provided to us. So not only is he going to talk about the water, but this is also going to focus on transportation. How Allah has facilitated travel for us. How we can move around in this earth. And of course, the more difficult mode of transportation is obviously the sea, the ocean moving around in the water. That is the majority of the earth, and that is also the more difficult uh, distance to traverse. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls our attention to that, and He says the miraculous sign is that Allah has carried their progeny. What does it mean by their progeny? Whose progeny? I mean the progeny of mankind, human beings. That human beings, Allah has carried them, allowed them to travel. Facilitated travel for them fil fulk al mashhoon in the ship in the boat that was filled all the way to its capacity. Now, what is this exactly talking about? So, there's two interpretations. The first one is that the majority of scholars, the classical tafasir, the Sahaba al Kiram radiallahu anhu, majority of people who have commented on this ayah are of the opinion that this is referring to the ark, to the ship of Nuh alayhi salam, the ark of Noah. That this is referring to the ship of Nuh alayhi salam. 
And there's actually something very specific, you know. One very important area of tafsir that is neglected. Like we've been doing a lot of uh, paying attention to the words and the construction of words and the language of the ayat. And that's something that's been neglected in more recent times when we talk about discussing the Qur'an and studying the Qur'an. Another area of tafsir, which is a core area of tafsir, it was the first, uh, it was the first thing that classical scholars of Qur'an would turn to. But once again, in, uh, in later times, it's been something that's been neglected. It hasn't been given its full due and its full attention. And that is tafsir al-Qur'an bil-Qur'an. To do the tafsir of the Qur'an, to study the Qur'an based on other ayat and other passages and other parts of the Qur'an. Because a lot of the secrets of the Qur'an are unlocked with other parts of the Qur'an. Because it's a whole comprehensive discourse and discussion in its entirety. And it's very, it's very comprehensive and it's also very cohesive. And so when you look, when sometimes you take an eye of the Qur'an, but you look in another part of the Qur'an, it sometimes helps you to understand this particular ayah that you're studying. And an ayah similar to that situation is Surah Al-Shu'ara, ayah number 119, Allah says, when talking about Nuh alayhi salam, Prophet Noah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَنْجَيْنَاهُ So we saved him, وَمَنْ مَعَهُ and those who were with him, fil fulkin mashhoon, in that ship that was completely filled up. So you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using the same exact word, al fulk al mashhoon, to describe the ark of Noah, the ship of Nuh alayhi salam. So therefore, it's a very clear understanding here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to the ship of Nuh alayhi salam based on another reference within the Quran itself. But some, a minority of scholars have still said that you can also, and there's no harm in this, because the Qur'an is so deep, it has many layers of understanding. So another reflection here is that Allah is just talking about traveling in ships and in boats in general. So either way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about this, that how He carried the progeny of mankind in that ship that was filled to its max, the ship of Nuh alayhi salam. وَخَلَقَنَا Because that, that allowed the survival of the human, of, of, of human beings. وَخَلَقَنَا لَهُمْ مِنْ مِثْلِهِمَا يَرْكَبُونَ And Allah says, وَخَلَقَنَا لَهُمْ And similarly, we have also made for them. We, and we have made for them. We have created for them. مِنْ مِثْلِهِ Just like it, مَا يَرْكَبُونَ That which they also are able to move around on. They are able to use for transportation. So وَخَلَقَنَا لَهُمْ We have made, we have created for them. Similar to that, similar to that boat, other modes of transportation, that which they can use as transportation, مَيَرْكَبُونَ So that they can ride on. So once again, what, the, what is this referring to? So if that first ayah is talking about the ship of Nuh salam specifically, this could also be talking about all other modes, all other ships and boats and canoes and whatever else we use to move around in the water. But if the first ayah is also talking about boats in general, then this is talking about other modes of transportation that we use on the earth. Because like similarly in another place in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so it's Zukhruf, ayah number 12, Allah says, وَجَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الْفُلْكِ وَالْأَنْعَامِ مَا تَرْكَبُونَ And we have made for you from boats and other animals. We have made for you from boats and animals مَا يَرْكَبُونَ مَا تَرْكَبُونَ That which you can use as transportation. لِتَسْتَوُوا عَلَىٰ ظُهُورِهِ ثُمَّ تَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ رَبِّكُمْ إِذَا اسْتَوَيْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ وَتَقُولُوا سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي سَخَرَ لَنَا هَذَا وَمَا كُنَّا لَهُ مُقْرِنِينَ وَإِنَّا إِذَا رَبِنَا لَمُنْ قَرِيبُونَ And this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala educates us on the dua for transportation. Now whenever you board anything, you get on top of an animal, or you get in your car, or you get on a boat, and you board anything, even an airplane, as a mode of transportation, then this is a supplication that you should recite, and we're all familiar with that supplication. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an says, boats and animals that He has allowed you to use as transportation. So this could also be talking about all those other modes of transportation, whether they be cars, or they be, or the first, and, first and foremost, they be animals, but even other things that we later on have been able to use as transportation. The resources that we've been able to harvest from the earth and create or, or uh, innovate other forms of transportation for ourselves. Whether they be carts, or they're cars, vehicles, automobiles, or they're even planes that fly around in the air. 
Either way, whatever form of transportation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has facilitated for us, He's the one who created it, He's the one who facilitated it, and He's the one who allowed it for us. So this is a great blessing of Allah, and it's a huge sign, and it's a huge moment of reflection for this human being. Because think about our lives, and how easy and facilitated they are through these means of transportation. And how our lives would be without these modes of transportation. وَإِن نَشَأْ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah number 30, 43, He says, وَإِن نَشَأْ And if we would have willed, نُغْرِقُهُمْ We could have drowned them. That they could be on this boat and this boat could have drowned. I mean, how often have we seen it? That sometimes it's such an unbelievable, huge, amazing, like just historically speaking, the Titanic. Such amazing modes of transportation, but what happens? They drown. They're, and, and when they do drown, and you kind of take a look at the bigger picture, it amounts to nothing. I mean, if it hits, if it hits a glacier in the water, you end up realizing that glacier is like a hundred si times the size of that boat that we thought was un unbelievably huge and colossal and amazing. So it's really nothing. Cars, they're fast, they're beautiful, they're, they're luxurious, how amazing. But how much, how, what does it really take for a car to crash? A little bump in the road? A little pothole? A little bit of wetness on the street? That's it. A little bit of ice on the road? It's gone. So subhanAllah, it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if we would have willed, we wished, we could have drowned them. نُغْرِقُهُمْ فَلَا صَرِيخَ لَهُمْ But then in that situation, لا صَرِيخَ لَهُمْ The word صَرِيخ comes from the root of the word which means to scream. When you scream for help. And so, Sarih not only means the one who screams for help, but it also is the one who hears someone screaming for help. Or the one who comes to the aid, to the rescue of somebody, who he hears screaming for help. فَلَا صَرِيخَ لَهُمْ There would be nobody to come to their aid. There would be nobody to help them out in that situation. Nobody would hear their screams. If somebody's drowning out there in the middle of the ocean, in the darkness of night, in the depths of the ocean, nobody would be around to hear their screams. It just kind of gives you that perspective. Once again, it's zooming in and showing you, look at these boats that you have. Look at these modes of transportation that you have. And then it zooms right out and says, but look at the bigger picture. Look at the bigger picture. And how weak and insignificant we are. And nor could they be saved. And I explained this word before, because it's come in this surah and this study before, that in qad, it means to save somebody from some very, very great danger, like somebody's falling off a cliff, or somebody's falling in the water, and you grab them and you pull them out and you save them. That's yunqad. So nobody would save them. Nobody could come to their rescue. And it, it, it appears, Allah says, wala hum yunqadun. And they would not be saved. There would be nobody to save them. Allah adds emphasis by adding the dhameen, the pronoun of whom. And not only that, but Allah places it in the present tense or future tense form, the mudari form, which means there nobody could help them. It, nobody would have the capacity, the ability to help them. Illa rahmatan minna. All of this is possible. Or people are not dying or people that are using these forms of transportation and are not drowning and dying and perishing and all of this facilitation whether it be boats in the water or animals on land or the cars or even the planes flying through the sky illa rahmatan minna this is only Allah says rahmatan minna this is a mercy from us and subhanallah what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He says rahmatan it's in its common form, the nakira form a mercy not the mercy, the ultimate mercy. This is just a mercy from us. SubhanAllah. Allah is saying that this is just one display of our mercy. Now just imagine for a second. If all the transportation that we have, and the fact that we survive, we drive our cars every day, without dying, without hurting, Allah keeps us safe. We fly in planes, we board ships and boats. Everybody, at this moment, there's just people Billions of, uh, hundreds of millions of people are moving around at this moment using some form of a transportation. And everybody's okay. And everybody's using and everybody's moving around. Allah says this is just one drop of the mercy of Allah. This is one drop of mercy from us. There are so many other things you don't even realize. Remember yesterday we studied and said things they don't even know, they don't even realize. So this one drop of the mercy of Allah. إِلَّا رَحْمَةً minna. 
And this is a facilitation. This is allowing us to benefit from it. Use it. Till a fixed time. Once again, the word حينين is again in its common form. Why? Because that time is fixed. The time is fixed when we have to leave this world. Or when, you know, we're meant to die, or we're meant to pass away, or some, some adversity is meant to come upon us. That time is fixed. But does anybody know that time? Nobody knows. Some people go 40 years driving a car without even getting a parking ticket. And they might die in a horrible car accident. You just don't know. Nobody knows. So that time is fixed. But nobody knows it. So Allah says, Hayin in, a fixed time. Nobody knows when that time is really fixed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this is facilitated through the mercy of Allah. And why is it facilitated? So people can benefit for a fixed time. And it's also sending a very strong reminder, a very strong message that. Somebody, because primarily this discourse, this discussion has been about people who aren't believing, who don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's reprimanding them, it's trying to remind them, it's trying to wake them up, snap them away. What are you doing? What, why don't you realize? So similarly, Allah is saying, look, Allah has allowed them to travel. Allah saved all those people in that boat of Nuh alayhi salam, the ship of Nuh alayhi salam. And he's allowed these people to travel all over the earth, all over the water, using all forms of transportation. If Allah wanted, they would have drowned, they would have died, they would have perished, they would have had horrible accidents. Nobody would be able to save them. Nobody would hear their screams. Nobody could help them and aid them. But Allah says, as a mercy from Allah, Allah allows them to continue to use all of this and benefit from all of this. But this is a benefit for a very limited amount of time. Meaning, don't get so absorbed, don't become so engaged, don't get so lost in this temporary benefit facilitation that you have, that you lose sight of the bigger picture. This is limited, it's for a very, very limited time. But rather realize, use some of these facilities in order to realize and in order to do some good. Because if you're able to do that, this is just a preview, just a small little glimpse of what awaits from the blessings of Allah. You think this is a huge mercy of Allah? You will see the real mercy of Allah on the Day of Judgment and in the gardens of paradise. But if you don't realize, you'll have nothing to show for it at the end of the day. It was a limited benefit for a limited amount of time. You know like a little, uh, they give you like a free trial? One week free trial? What happens when that one week's over? The second that one week ends, you get that email. 10.99. They don't give you one minute extra. Similarly, that limited time is there. If you make something of it, alhamdulillah. If you don't make anything of it, that time will come, angel of death will arrive, everything will be done, all the benefit will be done, and then the year after you have to pay the price for it. So it's a very strong and a firm reminder. The last thing inshallah I want to point out is something very beautiful. Interesting about the language of the Qur'an. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Rahmatan minna, a mercy from us. A mercy from us. Some places in the Qur'an, instead of the word Rahmatan minna, Allah says, Rahmatan min indina. Rahmatan min indina. For example, in Surah Al-Kahf, ayah number 65 in the story of Musa and Khidr, alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَوَجَدَا عَبْدًا مِنْ عِبَادِنَا and they both found a slave from our slaves. Atainahu, we had granted to him rahmatan min indina. Mercy min indina, especially from us. Rahmatan minna means mercy from us. Rahmatan min indina means mercy, especially from us. A mercy as a gift from us, as a favor from us, especially from us. In Surah Al Anbiya as well, when Allah is talking about Ayyub. The Prophet Ayyub alayhi salam, Allah says, وَآتِنَاهُ أَهْلَهُ And we granted him his family, وَمِثْلَهُ مَعَهُمْ And the equal amount of them, along with them, رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِنَا As a special mercy exclusively from us, as a gift from us, وَذِكْرَى لِلْعَابِدِينَ And this is a powerful reminder for those who enslave themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they worship Allah. This is Surah Al-Anbiya, ayah number 84. So what's the difference? You notice just from the word of it, Rahmatan minna, mercy from us. Rahmatan min indina, it's a bigger 
uh, it's a bigger construction. And therefore the meaning of it is greater as well. A mercy that is a special gift from us. Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about believers, prophets, pious people, good people, like the Prophet Ayyub, like Khidr, and the believers, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the construction, rahmatan min indina, a special mercy as a gift from us. But when Allah talks about the mercy that He has had, the blessings that He has bestowed upon regular people, even if they be disbelievers, just people in general, which obviously includes disbelievers as well, then Allah uses a smaller construction, rahmatan min a mercy from us. And we see the same thing happening with the word ni'mah as well. Some places in the Quran Allah says ni'matan minna. A blessing from us. A blessing from us. Like in Surah Al-Zumar Allah says, فَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ ضُرْوًا When a human being is afflicted or touched by some difficulty, da'ana, he prays to us, he calls out to us. ثُمَّ إِذَا خَوَّلْنَاهُ نِعْمَةً minna. Then when our blessing, we give our blessing to Him. We bestow our blessing upon Him. He says, oh, I was given this because of my knowledge, because of how intelligent I am, how talented I am. That's why I was given this. Is this a good person or a bad person Allah is talking about here? Very obviously, it's not talking, not talking about a very good person here. This is a bad person. Difficulty comes on it, what is your da'ana? Oh Allah, please help me. So Allah says, okay, here's the blessing. Allah says, here's the blessing. What does he turn to? See? See how amazing and talented I am? Bounce right back. Can't nobody hold me down? Right? So he, he has this arrogance about him. Takes all the credit for the good. Difficulty comes, yeah Allah. Good comes, okay, check me out. So this is not a good person. So when Allah talks about blessing on this person, he says, ni'matan minna. A blessing from us. But when Allah talks about a different type of a person, when He talks about Lut alayhi salam, who is a messenger of Allah, and the people who believed in Lut alayhi salam, and I want you to understand, you know, we live in a very, people are Muslims, especially Muslims that are trying to practice Islam, live a more Islamic lifestyle, are finding a lot of difficulty living today in today's environment, in today's culture. It's become very, very, uh, Shameless the environment, for lack of a better word. It's very, uh, uh, you know, the environment, the culture is very promiscuous. It's very uh, shameless. And it's, it's very difficult to protect one's iman, especially raising children is like a nightmare. For a lot of people, it's very, very difficult. It's a struggle. And we're finding it more and more difficult. And amongst the difficulty that we're finding is even sexual perversion. We're finding this, this, uh, this growing trend. Of, of homosexuality and all these other evils and vices spreading without, without, throughout our society and it becoming socially acceptable, completely acceptable, a natural part of just life and everybody's okay with it all of a sudden. And we find that very difficult. I want you to imagine the followers of Lut the believers at the time of Lut living in a society that was not just, didn't just have this evil, didn't just have this problem, but it was dominated by it. How difficult it must have been for them to survive. How difficult it must have been for them to protect their iman and their faith and live in that environment. So when Allah talks about Lut salam and believers that live through that type of a difficulty, stayed steadfast, not only that, but we're dealing with threats and violence from the majority that was around them that was living that evil lifestyle. But they stayed firm and they stood by the side of their messenger and their prophet, alayhi salam. Allah, when He talks about them, look how He talks about them. He says, Allah says that He sent down upon them like a shower, a thunderstorm of rocks, of stones, except for the family of Lut, the associates, the people that were affiliated with Lut We saved them in the early hours of the morning. Allah says, as a blessing, Especially as a blessing that was a special blessing that was a gift from us. Once again, he uses the special construction because he's talking about special people. Allah says, This is how we reward, we recompense the one who is grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, just a little something I wanted to point out about the language of the Quran, and it's important to appreciate the Quran in this light as well. That when Allah says, Rahmatan minna, ni'matan minna, 
a mercy from us, a blessing from us. Allah is just talking about general people. But when He says, Rahmatan min indina, ni'matan min indina, a special mercy as a gift from us, a special blessing as a gift from us, then Allah is talking about a very special group of people as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the understanding and the reality of everything that we've said and heard. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallah wa bihamdik. نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك